Hello and welcome okay, back to Lab Shebang. We're playing Into Dark tonight. In all the years I've come, I've never played under lights. We're starting on the Valley Nine, which is the hardest nine of the three. Out of bounds down the right, trees down the left. It's fairly wide though. It's not too much of a difficult shot. Into the fairway, we're off and running. The water isn't in play, but that bunker most certainly is. Also, the green slopes from back to front. So somehow we've got to sneak over the bunker, but be short of the flag. That was a bit thin. So we're yeah. most definitely short of the flag. But this isn't a difficult chip. It's just a matter of popping it up and hoping it doesn't run out too far. Remember, my last round was at a course with exceptionally slow greens. Now I just found out my caddy is absolutely brand new and I've said, no problem, we'll work this out together. She's part of my team and so we're going to help each other out. And with a bit of luck, we can get some putts in and make some pass. Okay. This tee shot is pretty tight. Water all the way down the left and it requires a little draw. So let's see if I can get this ball some 50 yards left of my first shot. Over the water, water all the way down the right, you don't want to be in the trees left, so you've got to hit a fade. I'll take the three hybrid and fade it towards that bunker. Leaves me 52. Now I know you can't go past this flag either. You get downhill, down grain. That wasn't a great contact. So it hasn't stopped and I'm still absolutely seething. Basic fucking rules of the game. I'm afraid that's going to be a feature of this round. It's very hard to play golf when you are incredibly angry. The next hole is even tighter, water down the right, a long waste bunker that I can assure you you don't want to be in. So you've either got to hit a draw or get very tight to these trees because the fairway slopes left to right and it's going to run hard right. Now we go over water with the second shot. The bunker isn't really in play if you've got the right club in your hand. That's a little thin, which is going to be another feature of this round. Now I said that when you play a slow golf course, it mucks up your putting. And then when you come back to a fast green, it also mucks up your putting. And sometimes when you get something that's into the grain or whatever, you get it completely wrong. I mean, a long, long way wrong. And that's one of the reasons why I really don't like to play cheap courses. Big bunker down the middle but it's not actually in play for me. There's plenty of room on the left hand side and I can get over it with my modest 225 yard carry. And that puts us in ideal position. Now I can't keep this face open today. It's a real struggle. Going over the water isn't an issue. But I keep shutting the damn face. So we're oh. never going to get close enough to make any birdies. Just had a chat with the caddy. We've worked this out between us. And this time we get a par. Oh. Okay. Yeah, never forget to thank your caddy. And never forget to build her up, especially a new caddy. They need all the confidence they can get. My favourite par 3. It usually plays a 4 or a 5 iron. It's surrounded by sand. It's incredibly difficult. 
only a well struck shot will do. And of course the last time here I was a hero. We walked onto this tee five years ago and there was rather a large snake on the tee. The caddies went running off. I just shooed it out of the way with my four iron and it slipped into the undergrowth in front of the tee. Now one of the features here is the cup or the little round circle of plastic above the cup. Sometimes it isn't sat all the way in. It's because they've sanded the hell out of the greens over the years. If they don't put that sleeve in, the hole collapses. Part five. Sand left and right, but they're not really in play for me. Now I face a very large tree in the middle of the fairway. You can't see it. You will see it in my next round because it's during normal daylight. But just a six iron and the plan is to go underneath it and roll out the other side. <laughs> Except I hit it flush. Going to try and fade a nine iron. I think perhaps I should have used a straighter club and half a shot and I would have achieved it. No. Mr. Green, this is an awkward chip coming up. Good chance. The camera is very awkwardly balanced on the back of this pimple which passes for a T. I'm thinking about that and instead of fading it round the bunkers, I pull it into the trees and we kill yet another monkey. I can't go for this flag over this bunker, so I've got to go for the chute, the apron of the green, and then we'll chip up and go for a par. Now this is where an experienced caddy would have given me a good line. I didn't get a line for this, so I just simply chipped it straight at the flag. Of course this lady's learning, so I hope in future she'll give the advice to play a little right, because this thing takes a hard left. Now as you can see, shadows are becoming wow, an issue in this evening. So you really need to be aware of what you're doing and where you're putting your shadow. You know, you wouldn't want to put your shadow directly over the hole to put off your playing partner. And I'm so fed up with this guy, what I should have done was ask him to move, but I just got on with it. The least conversation, the better in my book from now on. Par three, over water, a lot of sand, sand at the back. I've always hit a seven iron here, and I've always faded it, and I've always had a birdie chance. In fact, I am most definitely under par for this hole over the years. But if you can't keep the face open, it's going to go long. And now we're on a downslope. And par becomes absolutely impossible. I can't believe I'm in here. But then I am struggling with my grip today. Yeah. So what is my record at Lampshire Bang? Well, I have actually parred all three nines, including this difficult nine. But I was in much better form, and most certainly f more focused on what I was doing, instead of wondering what the guy I'm playing with is going to do next. You just never know. Is a shadow going to appear? Is he going to stand behind me when I'm playing? Is he going to stand behind me when I'm putting? My mind is elsewhere. But my best round is a four over 76. So anything between 76 and 80 is a decent score for me round this course. This hole plays exceptionally long and exceptionally difficult and the green is no different. 
four iron up the hill flag is way at the back I'm going to try and fade it in there try and get some height coming up the hill because my four iron tends to go a bit on the low side okay now I should chip this because I'm no good at putting over the fringe I quite often hit it too hard and when you've been playing on slow greens too hard can be exceptionally too hard all I really wanted to do here was get off the course now we go to the middle nine the lake nine and I'm having to enhance the pitches here bunkers down the hole not in play for me so some of these pitches are going to look a little bit weird as I've been fiddling with the settings this is a little easier this is a little better as you can see the Sun is going down quick that's the thing with the equator the Sun goes straight over the top and straight down there's no long evening there's no hours of twilight it is dark by half past six a little bit slow and this is what happens when you've been playing a slow course you hit him past you hit him short you hit him past you hit him short now the par five over the water now the water isn't really in play but that bunker down the left most certainly is and you don't want to go in the trees on the right because it's damn difficult to get out of them so at the bunker with a little fade just for once it does it for me but it won't do it on my second shot again this is a par five that I normally have a good chance at birdie but if I can't keep the face open that birdie chance disappears down the left that's not a bad place to be actually the big front bunker on the right is a good place to be I'm not going to pitch straight at this flag it looks a bit dodgy to me I got a bit of a dodgy lie so I've got to go a little safe so I'm just going at the right edge of this bunker as opposed to over it and towards the flag another good chat with the caddy another good workout of the line and now what she'll do is she'll watch this is what the new caddies do we work out what we're going to do and as soon as the ball's on the way she'll watch to see if it actually turns out okay and that's how they learn Lights coming on. finally the illumination Ooh. is beginning and I really am struggling to find my normal fade I think the right hand is creeping under the shaft this took some finding in the dark not a good lie so we're short pitch up the green I know the grain is left to right so I've got to aim a little left and hope we hopefully we can stop it that was a little skinny a little clean so we've gone past now one of the most important things to do is to praise your caddy when it all goes right that's the first person I turn to when the ball's in the hole persisting with driver on this hole I really shouldn't this should be a five wood all day at the right hand bunker ah. instead of a pull driver down the left yeah. perhaps if they could plant some jungle over there I'd get back to my normal ways wedge up the hill and it is quite steeply up the hill lights are on but nobody's home in my head you ever have one of those days where your grip feels like it belongs to someone else I'm happy for one of those days and my caddy is um, She's learning, so what she's doing, she'll give me an opinion 
and then she'll stand behind me as I put to see if that opinion's correct. I don't mind being a guinea pig. If it helps them learn, it helps them learn. Of course, when you play in the evening, you've got long shadows, and under lights, you've got long shadows, and that shadow really shouldn't oh, be good. there. You have to be more aware of what on earth is going on. Nice two putt from the caddy, though. Yeah, just one ball. And I confirmed to her that it was one ball, just like she said. It looks quite pretty. Going to... Right, par three. Now the flag is way at the back, at the fat part of the green. This is my favourite spot. We're going with a five iron. And we all thought this was on the dance floor. Maybe it taken a strange bounce or it was the grain, but either way, we're in the sand. Flip it up nicely, stop it quick. You see how wide I was. On this putt, the lady asked the experienced caddy about the line. And they both got it right. Now we go to Jack's signature hole. This time I'm ticket taking driver. I don't want to stay back on the flat. I want to get on the flat way down the far end of the fairway, up against the water. Well, I missed the bunker, but I'm in the rough. I can't guarantee to get good contact on this. So despite it only being 150 yards, I'm going left. And it's a good job I did. I didn't get all of the ball. If I'd been going at the flag, I'd be reaching for another ball. Chip it up. And again. Wow, wow, wow. The break beat me. What also beats me here is a shadow going straight across my ball just as I'm about to putt. I wish I could have stopped and stood away from that. 335, I have no idea why I'm going driver here. I'm going down the left and trying to fade it off that bunker. Now the reason I try and avoid fairway bunkers is because I'm useless out of them. I don't know why I can't pick the ball clean. I always take a bunch of sand like I'm in a greenside bunker. Another pitch, a little bit clean and we go past. And if I'm going to keep giving myself downhill down grain putts, well you can't hold them all. Not when you've got to hit them that soft. And the bogeys are coming much too easy right now. Another par three in the sand again. I've been in this bunker three times in all my years and twice on this trip. Don't ask me why. A little bit too much sand. Now we need a really good line from our caddy. Well, this hole's a bit of a mess, so I'm just going to talk about my new caddy. I feel it's my responsibility as a golfer to help her out as best I can, rather than shouting at her and saying, you're not doing a good job. I'd rather help her out. It is my responsibility as an experienced golfer to do the very best I can to build her confidence and to discuss putts on the green and if I miss them, shit, shit, shit. then we got to discuss how far the putt might have turned rather than what we guessed at. And I also believe it is my responsibility to make her day be as good as she's Not trying enough. to make my day. Not enough. There's absolutely no point 
in being miserable about having a new caddy and making her day miserable. Cheerio!